Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you a nice trick to add animations across multiple elements in your Storyline e-learning module, all by using just one trigger on the master slide. This is especially handy for large projects with lots of interactive elements where you want a uniform animation effect. This is a really powerful tip because if you change your mind down the line and want your interactable elements to have a different animation applied, you only need to make the changes in one place. On the master slide trigger. You don't have to go through all the slides with the format painter or manually change animations. You don't have to do all that. This can really speed up your workflow. Now let's see how you can implement this using Storyline. I have some slides here and a bunch of individual cards I use to describe each race. I've given three descriptions to the elves, seven to the dwarf lords, and nine, nine descriptions to the race of men. Now your interactable elements can be anything you like. In my example, I use these card elements. Each card is basically a group. Here I have a shape, a text box, and a PNG icon. On the other slides, it's just a group of a shape and a text box. This one card here can be clicked to reveal more information. So as you can see, even though they are all cards, they don't all look the same and don't have the same functionality. What I want to do is add a hover animation to all of the cards across all slides. Let's say I want to apply a hover animation that moves the card up when the mouse hovers over it and moves the card back down when the mouse hovers out. To do that, when the timeline starts on a slide, I would need to scan for all the elements which are of type card then add an animation on mouse hover, then reverse that animation when the mouse hovers out. First, I need to grant the code a way to know which elements are of type card. To do that, I will select each group and add an accessibility name to it. I've called all the cards interactable. This is their accessibility name. Now you can give them whichever name you want. Just make sure that all the elements you want to animate have the same name. The safest way to actually select the whole group is by right-clicking them here on the timeline, otherwise you might end up selecting the individual elements inside the group. If you're watching this from the future and Articulate made it possible to add JavaScript classes or IDs to elements, just make sure that each element has the same class or ID. So here is the code we're going to use. Here I'm selecting all the cards with the accessibility text of interactable by using query selector all. This first line is a bit special and different from what we've used so far in other videos to select elements. Because we have selected multiple elements, we need to go over each element and individually apply the code that allows them to move on hover. To do that, we are using a for each function. So for each element from the list of selected interactable elements, the code applies the effects. First, we create a GSAP timeline. We create this timeline in a paused state, so it doesn't play unless we tell it to. Then we define the animation we need. I'm gonna move the element upwards by 10% of its height. If an element is taller, it will move more. If an element is shorter, it will move less. Then I move on to add the event listeners for mouse hover. When the mouse hovers above the element, I play the animation defined in the timeline. Once the mouse hovers out, the timeline animation will reverse, bringing the element back to its initial position. Obviously, here you can listen for other events as well. You can make something happen when the element is clicked, or when the mouse wheel moves, or whatever. And that's all we have to do. If I publish now, I can hover over all of my elements and the same effect will be applied to all of them. I don't have any triggers here on the slide, nothing. <laughs> Let me tell you, my mind was blown when I discovered this. Imagine all the possibilities. You can leave this on the main master slide if you want, or move the trigger to a separate master slide and apply that master slide template for each slide that has interactable elements. But if you're using this on the main slide, keep in mind that not all of your slides might have interactable elements. If so, the query selector will not manage to find any elements to select. 
then some errors might appear in the console. To prevent this from happening, you can change your code like this. We can wrap it in an if statement so that it only runs when it finds interactable elements on the slide. Here are some other fun things you can do with this. So if I change my mind now and want to tilt the elements to the right a bit, I just have to change this animation and set the rotation here. And then just publish and the effect will be applied to all of my cards. I can also change the cursor type to a hand cursor when hovering over the elements to show that they can be interacted with. This is especially useful if your event listener is for a mouse click. Here, since I have a trigger to show the layer set from storyline, the mouse changes to a hand automatically. But if I were to add a mouse click event listener to my cards, I would have to manually change the cursor to a hand on hover to provide that little bit of user feedback that hey, this is an element you can interact with. I can also set up a different animation for my buttons like this. Maybe lower the opacity on hover, which I like to do, which basically adds a hover state to them. So I just need to make sure that all of my buttons have the same accessibility name. Since I'm using the same image for all of my buttons, all I have to do is go here to my media library and add the accessibility text button to all of my button images. That's it. With just one trigger, you can now add interactivity to items across your e-learning module. Well, I hope you enjoyed this experiment. Thank you for watching.